Adamance is one of the new moons introduced in version 50. Is it good? Good enough for the moon you go to for the first quarter? Let's take a look. Out of the four new moons in the update, it is the only one you can see in the terminal. The other moons are locked behind a secret, artifice and embryon, or is unreleased, liquidation. Adamance, risk level B, costs nothing to go to, and is one of the three intermediate moons alongside Offense and March. I'll also compare it to the easy moons Vow and Assurance. We'll compare them later on in the video. I'll exclude Experimentation and Embryon because the scrap is bad and the danger on Embryon is too much for little reward. But first, here's an overview of the moon. It is a forest moon, lush with red trees and lined with cliffs and hilly terrain. I'm going to start with the bridges because I'll be talking about them a lot in the other sections. There's two of them, the long bridge to the right of the ship and the short bridge to the left. The long bridge has a durability like Val's bridge. Once it reaches zero durability, then it will collapse. You can tell the durability is decreasing by the sound and visual cue. If no one stands on the bridge, it will regenerate to full durability over 5 seconds. If there are more employees on the bridge, or if they weigh more because they're carrying items or tulip snakes, then the bridge will decrease in durability faster, leading to a faster collapse. Monsters can break this bridge. Usually this bridge will only be used if you're not carrying anything or just a flashlight or another light item, like going to main for example. If you have loot on you, it'll likely just collapse before you get to the end. Here I have a 24 pound bell and I just barely reach the end before it collapses. If it collapses and you fall into the pit, you take 50 HP damage. A player has 100 HP. Moving on to the short bridge, this half of the bridge will not collapse. Only the second half will collapse. It has three lives, so I've jumped on it once, twice, three, four, then it'll break. And I take 50 HP damage. It seems like weight and the length of time on the bridge doesn't affect its lifespan. It's just a number of jumps. If the bridge is down, you can use an extension ladder to cross it. Alternatively, you can use this metal support if you don't weigh too much. Here's how you can use the extension ladder the other way. Monster AI gets a bit funky when you're standing on either side of the bridge. They'll have trouble getting to you until you step off the short bridge. There's a couple ways to get to the main entrance. Of course you can use the long bridge or the short bridge. You can use the terrain path. You can head down these cliffs to the lower part of the forest. It's essentially a pit. Then you'll head up these hills. To reach the fire exit, you can go to the short bridge, jump over and head to the left. From the main entrance, it's easy, just head this way and go around this hill. There is another way, which is a lot longer, but it's safer. So maybe during the night. So you go around this valley, and then you see this little ledge here. So you go on top of that and jump up to the top. Jump twice there, and you go around the outskirts, making sure you hug the right wall so you don't fall off. Make a jump there, make sure you hug the right wall, and there you you can see the fire exit there. And now just climb these mountains, sometimes you need to make a jump, and you will get onto this flat plateau. And here you want to hug the left wall now so you don't fall off, and there it is. There are several ways to get back to the ship. Some are more dangerous than others but take less time. Let's take a look at the more dangerous ones first. You can go on the shore bridge. If you have heavy loot though, it's pretty difficult to make the jump. Might just be me being bad at this game. You can use extension ladders to make life easy. 
You can try going on the long bridge, but it'll likely collapse before you get to the end, assuming you have scrap. You can take the long bridge on the last trip back to the ship before you end the day. If and when it collapses, then it's okay. You can use the shortcut behind the cabin. Just make sure you can survive the fall. The most dangerous is probably the terrain path. So head down this hill to the pits, then hike your way back up. However, there's likely going to be monsters here, so be careful. You can use a little shortcut at the end here. So there are more safe ways. They take a lot longer, but you probably won't run into anything. Firstly, thanks to 10,000 bees, Marcelio 2017, and BU Vibes for these. This is a very long way from the fire exits, but it's very safe. So you go to this valley here and there's a little jump you can make so first you need to drop your loot up to the top then once you have your loot at the top you can make the jump you can run to the cliff and spam jump until you're at the top so you can grab your items and now we just go and follow this cliff edge on this plateau and here you have to hug the left wall, otherwise you'll fall into the water. And then now you just follow. Follow. And there we go. So now there's a ship. And go this way. And there it is. The other way of going is... So when we reach that platform here, we can go to the right instead. So if there's anything that's blocking your way on the left then you can use the right path to go back to the ship okay from main so we can make another jump here you can see that this jump is actually climbable doesn't look like it but you can climb nearly to the top here so now we're going to do the same thing we're going to drop our items at the top and then once we have recovered the stamina we're going to run and do a double jump just like before so we're going to run and we're going to spam jump until we get up. And now we just grab our items. And we follow this path here. Just keep following the path. And here is the cabin and there is the ship. So another way of going is this path here. It's basically the same a uh, path but where it's just a different jump on the right here there's quicksand so be careful of that and we just make that jump there and we just grab our items and we just take the same path as before and i'm not sure if people have discovered this before but you can hug the left cliff here and you end up at this ledge just above the cabin and it's basically a shortcut for the previous ways going back to the ship. If you have more ways to get around Adamance, I'd like to see them in the comments below. Adamance has an outdoor max power of 13, the second most of all moons, with these spawn chances. It is tied with Artifice and the unreleased Liquidation. Here are the other moons outdoor powers. Monsters and Adamance can be really early. I've seen some dogs and hawks around 10am, so be careful of that. Baboon Hawks are the most common enemy. They spawn in a group of two and each with a power level of 0.5. You'll likely see a large group of these in your runs. They can steal scrap so don't leave your items outside main or fire exits. You might notice these wood structures with the employee head. This is their nest. Baboons might hang out here, they can spawn from here and will take scrap here. There can be zero or one nest in a round. Knowing where the nest is is pretty crucial because it can make different parts of the map dangerous due to the baboons. Like if the baboons are here, then it cuts off the long bridge to the main entrance path. You can use the short bridge path instead. Another example, if the baboons are here, you can probably use the cabin shortcut instead of going through the terrain. So knowing all the places around adamants becomes useful. Keep in mind they can roam around the map. The indoor max power is 13. All indoor monsters have a chance of spawning here with the most common being Thumper and Bunker Spider. They are also the most common in March and Offense. 
March doesn't spawn Butler, Ghost Girl, and Masked. Offense doesn't spawn those and Jester. Val doesn't spawn those and Nutcrackers. Assurance doesn't spawn Butler, Jester, Coilhead, Masked. Here are the other moons max indoor power. You can see that Adamance is pretty high. Here are the daytime entities. Tulip Snakes, Badonkly Goofy Goobers are the new entity. Here's a full guide on the top right. Note that there were some changes to that video. They can spawn on Artifice and spawn in groups of 4 instead of 3. Bees can spawn here for extra loot. 48.4% of the time there will be at least one hive. Let's compare that to the other moons. Assurance has a 44.7% chance of at least one hive. Val has 57.2% chance. It has a pretty high chance for multiple. March has 61.6% .6 chance. Has even higher chance for multiple. And offense cannot spawn hives. Big thanks to Marl and GeoCell for these charts and the charts coming up. They are geniuses. For hazards, adamants can have turrets, landmines, and spike traps. For turrets, adamants can have up to 12, but mostly you're going to have rounds where there's zero. Assurance will likely have one or two turrets and can be up to 10. Val is likely to have zero, but it can go up to seven. March can have up to 15 where common numbers are 0, 1, 2. Offense can have up to 8 or 9, and the distribution is pretty common, so expect to face turrets here. For landmines, adamants can have up to 35, but you'll mostly see rounds of 0. Assurance can have up to 7, but mostly 0 and 1. Bow can have up to 20, but commonly 0. March can have up to 15, and commonly you'll see 0 to 6. Offense can have up to 16, commonly you'll see 2 to 5. For spike traps, adamants can have up to 2, you'll often see rounds of 2. Assurance can have up to 2 but mostly 0. Vow has none, offense can have up to 4, march can have up to 9. Here is what everyone's waiting for probably. The indoors are mostly factory with a small chance of being a mansion. The map size multiplier is 1.18. Remember, the smaller the number, the smaller the indoors. So Adamance's indoors are quite small and you won't get lost too easily. And exploring the whole indoors is easier. Here's a comparison to the other moons. Adamance is on the smaller end. The scrap value has been adjusted quite a lot since the first version 50 beta. The average used to be like 1300, something crazy like that. But they've toned that down quite a lot. Now it's in the high 750, including apparatus, which is better than assurance, march, and offense. Just around 650. Val is just under 600. Beehives aren't counted here, so if you get them, then that's added on to the scrap value. In case you're wondering, the next tier moons, Ren, Dine, Titan, and Artifice, have much bigger scrap values, so they're much better than Adamant's. For solo players, it might be helpful to know that Offense and March have a lot more two-handed items in comparison to Adamant's, Val, and Assurance, so you'll have to do more trips from the ship to the main or fire exit. All five weather types can occur. For flooded weather, here's a time-lapse of the moon. You can see that the flood is high in the morning but gets lower as the day goes on. You'll need to use the bridges to get to the entrances in the morning until later on when the water level gets low enough to use the pits. It'll always be flooded on the first day. During stormy weather, I don't recommend landing. During the long travel from the indoors to the ship, there will be lots of chances for lightning to strike you while you're carrying conductive scrap back. You'll have to worry about the many monsters as well. Although the baboons can take your conductive scrap back to their nest and unalive themselves for you. For eclipsed weather, there's a minimum immediate spawn count of three entities, so it spawns three random monsters when you land. Not recommended to go here when it's eclipsed unless you want a challenge. Foggy weather is the same for every moon. If you're confident with the layout, then it's no problem. Rainy weather introduces more quicksand, you'll need to be careful, especially in the pits. 
And be careful of quicksand in front of main entrance. Yeah, probably want to skip adamants if it's rainy. So you want to avoid adamants when it comes to most of these weather types. It just makes your day job a lot harder for no added reward, as there's no additional scrap. It should have extra rewards, don't you think? The item dropship is in front of the ship. You'll have to drop down here. It would have been more convenient if it was behind the ship, but hey, it's a little added challenge if you're buying later at night, I guess. In the pit, there's a locked cabin. There's nothing of note inside it except this code 68 arts, which if you enter through the terminal, will reveal one of the hidden moon's artifice. You can see the code through the window, so getting a key isn't necessary. If you unlock it, then you can use it as a safe place for monsters, just like the cabin in Ren. There's a tower near the main entrance, which you can reach with a jetpack or tulip snakes, or the jump from before. It can be used as a landmark for navigation. Otherwise, it's just for cosmetics. So now I ask you guys, what do you think about adamants? Is this the go-to moon for the first quota? Leave your comments below. Also, I want to know what moon I should make a guide on next. Alright, I appreciate you guys. See you in the next video. Laters. And subscribe.